Welcome back everyone to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program 1.0.5. Now you'll remember from the previous episode we built this rather natty miniature science probe which is going to be delivered to Juna in that little science bay there. But in order to complete the uh, total array of science available on Duna, we're going to need ourselves a scanning satellite. So let's head on over to the VAB and build exactly that. Now while we were able to build a relatively uh, small science rover, we are going to be a little bit limited on the parts we're going to be able to use to create a small um, scanning satellite because we are rather stuck uh, I think it's the M700 uh, survey scanner and that is pretty big uh, so uh, no matter what we do we're going to have to have a pretty big scanning satellite uh, radar thingy here on the top of our new probe core Remember, we unlocked this probe core in a recent episode uh, so uh, this is going to be rather large, which rather limits what we can do. Now I'd also like to role play the transmitters. I'm not using remote tech, but I would like a transmitter that is capable of getting signals back from Duna. So uh, let's build out the rest of this craft. Now uh, we're probably going to need ourselves a control wheel. So we use, uh, not the big one, we'll use the little small inline uh, reaction wheel and we are going to need uh, some batteries so let's get some of these little round batteries uh, so let's try uh, two of those uh, yep and for fuel I think for a small satellite uh, let's try using some of these little toroidal tanks they rather sort of look the part we'll get a we'll get a couple of those maybe uh, yep so let's get two of those uh, and then for an engine, uh, the choice is pretty obvious because with these little toroidal engines, this little spark engine fits rather neatly inside. So that creates uh, what is uh, a relatively uh, small satellite, uh, but with this rather giant transmitter on the top of it. But this is only a scanning transmitter. We do need, uh, is it the 8888 uh, transmitter? Is that going to appear here? Yes, there we go. The Communitron 88. 88. So if we put that on the side there and then expand it, uh, we're going to see a couple of problems. It just about clears uh, the toroidal fuel tanks, but even on this side it clips into the uh, M700 uh, there at the top. Uh, and if I, can I grab hold of it? And even if I bring it right down, it's just about clipping in and it doesn't quite clear this. Now, under normal circumstances, I probably wouldn't argue with that, but we do have an opportunity here to make use of some other parts, uh, in particular some parts uh, that we can get from Infernal Robotics. Now, we don't yet have uh, the uh, pistons. Uh, we've got adjustable rail there. Not sure why that comes up under 8888, uh, but we do have uh, this hydraulic cylinder. Uh, it is rather large and it doesn't fit on the side of anything. Uh, so that's going to prove a little bit of a problem. But all of these sorts of problems can be fixed uh, using our good friend the cubic octagonal strut because cubic octagonal struts will stick to just about anything. So there we go. Uh, that sticks on the side there, which now means uh, if we can get this uh, lined up. Uh, so let's just rotate this this way around. There we go. Uh, so um, we now have this uh, hydraulic cylinder. Uh, which can be uh, extended and retracted uh, using uh, Infernal Robotics. But it is rather large, uh, so what I'm going to do is right click on it and uh, reduce it in scale uh, so it comes down to something perhaps a little more uh, suitable for what we need. So for example, we go back and get our Communitron 8888 uh, and then plant that here uh, on the end, so let's just uh, rotate that, get it the right way around. 
There we go. So uh, that gives us our hydraulic cylinder. Now, I think if I get out our Inferno Robotics control panel, our servo control, uh, I could name a group of items that I want to extend simultaneously, and I could name this specific item if I wanted to. But we're going to just take the defaults, and we're just going to look at how the animation works. So you can see how... Uh, as I press down on the extend button, you can see it just very slightly extending uh, this uh, Communitron 8888 just well outside of uh, the uh, clipping zone, if you like, which is this side of the uh, M700 scanner. But this doesn't look particularly nice, does it? Uh, this doesn't really fit the part that we really wanted to do. So what we're going to do, let's just close uh, close this up for the second. Uh, what we're going to do is use uh, the offset and we can just basically uh, pull this part back in until we get something that's just sticking out the side there maybe. Maybe we do that. Uh, and then uh, get back our control panel uh, and now uh, we can pull this in and out as we see fit. So that goes back that far. That's perhaps uh, still, I don't know, it, it doesn't clip, but it doesn't really uh, look quite right. Uh, so perhaps what we will do then, uh, can I grab hold of, if I take that out, I don't know that I can, oh yes I can, I can control Z and I can control uh, y to reduce uh, the size. So what I think I might do is take the offset again and pull this inside of the cubic octagonal strut and then move, if I can grab hold of it here, uh, the cubic octagonal strut. Oh, come on. Let's see if I can click away. There we go. And then pull that back in. So what we really want is this right the way in and this back as far as we can take it neatly. There we go. So it's not sticking out that side uh, and uh, it is just touching the edge. So let's see if we extend that now all the way out to its maximum extension. If we then, oh, I've got to go back into uh, place mode. So let's click that and extend. So that's perfect. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, so it meets uh, here back at the body, like so, and uh, we can contract it as well. So I think that pretty much sorts that. Now, of course, that is our long range uh, scanner. Let's just close that up. That's our long range uh, antenna. Uh, but we really ought to have a short range antenna as well so that we can pick up signals from our tiny little science rover. So let's go and get uh, uh, an antenna. There we go. So let's go and get this uh, tiny Communitron 16. I wonder if that's going to uh, clip. There we go. Let's get that locked in there. There we go. So that's clipped in there. Uh, and if we extend that, of course, that's not going to clip into uh, clip into anything, so that's good. Uh, so uh, we can retract uh, that. So we've got our scanner. We do, of course, need some solar panels uh, because this has got to charge its panels somehow. So let's go and have a look for panels. Uh, now, we could use the heavier and more expensive ones that uh, close up into this little casing, but that's probably not necessary. So let's go and look for uh, a couple of uh, these uh, longer panels. So let's get uh, two of those. Let's go back on to snap uh, and get a couple of these which we will uh, rotate in the right direction like so. so. That's two of those. So let's now extend those out so they uh, miss our panel but when they're rotated they may just clip into the tank. So let's just close that up again and Oops, I think I've got, yeah, got hold of the battery there. So let's just move these up just a little bit, perhaps to there. There we go, so let's just extend them again. So that should have clearance, maybe, maybe. Let's have a look. Oh, no, grabbed hold of that again. Let's bring them right up to the top there. So let's retract and retract this one as well. So, yep. Yeah. They just miss the antenna, and they will now definitely uh, not be clashing with our uh, our toroidal tanks. 
Uh, next up, uh, I think we will be needing, uh, we will definitely be needing a, uh, a Compo Max Radial Tubeless, which is actually the replacement uh, part. We only need one of these. Uh, it's the replacement for the uh, for the um, KOS processor. That's what I was trying to think. The inline uh, processor. So that will do our uh, KOS activities and make sure. Let's uh, increase its uh, uh, memory uh, capacity as well. Uh, now we do need to cram in again our uh, from the control section. Is it control? No, science. And it go from science section. There we go. Our Kerbal Engineering Unit. So if we put the Kerbal Engineering Unit here on this side, I realise it uh, clips just a little bit into the base there. But we'll we'll uh, we'll let that off. Uh, we'll let that uh, we'll let, we'll be let off for that. So we have our uh, little processor here, uh, and we have our uh, we have our Kerbal Engineering. Uh, system here. So we're going to do uh, all of our uh, orbital manoeuvres when we get to Juna using this uh, little spark engine in the fuel that's in here. We have two batteries, transmitter, we have some panels and of course we have our rather large M700 scanner here at the top. Uh, so that uh, pretty much wraps up the probe that we need to build. Uh, so let's give it a name. So what I thought we would call uh, this is the uh, uh, Duna Orbital Scanner uh, with a survey, a servo-controlled experimental radar, uh, the DOSA Mark One. Yes, very, uh, <laughs> uh, very inventive there, even if it doesn't quite make sense. So that is our uh, satellite part. We'll need to attach this to the rover part and then give it a launcher. But with that said, I'd like to thank you for watching and we'll pick up this uh, probe and the rover in the next episode. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>